from the University of Massachusetts at Boston in the US, and he is uh, talking to us about the assessment of biodiversity data use, uh, collected using iNaturalist compiled over three years of college freshman orientations. Okay, can people see that? Yes. All right. Um, just uh, by way of introduction, we're having some amazing talks today, and they're they're covering really big and important topics. And so now we're going to dive down just to a little scientific study. But I want to preface that by saying that um, we all know that citizen science has started to make a big impact on understanding biodiversity globally, and that one of the most important aspects about citizen science is sort of a lack of trust of the data. So uh, that's what our working group has been working on is data quality and, and citizen science. And this little, this little microcosm of a scientific report is about that issue too. So um, although I, I'm really appreciating all the other talks I'm hearing today and, and their potential to do things at a very global scale, and this is just a little talk, it's uh, in the context of this bigger problem that we all know is important too. So with that, I'll uh, proceed to um, go forward. Uh, this is done with a couple collaborators uh, here in Boston. And this is UMass Boston sticking out into Boston Harbor here. And in the background is uh, the Boston proper where Suffolk College is located. And this is about the experience of some college freshmen who are un undergoing an orientation um, experience in which they're um, leave the campus for an overnight stay on an island in Boston Harbor. And this is the island, it's called Thompson's Island. It's where environmental education takes place. If people are familiar with Outward Bound as an organization that runs those kinds of things, it's about discovery and extending oneself. And so the, uh, the Honors College takes these freshmen and these freshmen come from a, a wide variety of backgrounds. It's not just science. It's, uh, it's all the colleges, so you could be a nurse, you could be a philosopher, you could be an, uh, in art or music. And um, part of this uh, experience was designed really as, um, as just for these students to get to one, know one another and start to form community. UMass Boston, until very recently, didn't have any residential housing, so this is a good way to, to build community. And during this, um, they've decided to devote a three hour segment to exploring the biodiversity of the island and recording it. And um, they use the iNaturalist platform. And uh, it's important for you to know that by and large, these students are unfamiliar with citizen science as an idea and they're unfamiliar with iNaturalist. They haven't used the app, so they're brand new. Um, and the other thing to know is that um, the reason they're doing this is from the general point of view of observation in all parts of life, you need to be a good observer. So the idea is that they would enjoy being in nature and seeing species and they would enjoy thinking about observation. Okay, this is the same island taken from a different angle. We were looking from the other end before. So now instead of looking back towards the city, we're looking out. And I just wanted to point out some habitats here. There's a big salt marsh here and salt marsh here. These are dark areas, are forested areas. There's fields here. Um, and then this is the shoreline. So this is a coast, coastal area. So there's quite a bit of uh, diversity there in terms of habitat. Um, and um, our question was, what kinds and qualities of observations can naive observers make using the iNaturalist platform to advance our understanding of biodiversity? Um, and as an evaluation process, we looked at the, the uh, research grade of the iNaturalist op observations. We looked at the species that were recorded. We looked at the efforts by the students to take images. Um, we looked at the quality of the images. We scored those. Uh, and we looked at the, uh, and independent of the of sort of the images, we looked at the usefulness of images for identification. And finally, uh, we looked at the spatial quality of the data that came back. Um, this was a, a total of um, 
about uh, 300 teams. They went out to each quadrant. Uh, they were sent out to four quadrants of the island, um, about uh, maybe 50 to 80 students at a time. And over three years, there were about 300 uh, teams. Um, so they got a total of 2,000 observations during this period. 34 made it to research grade, 67, 63% needed ID, and three were casual, meaning that they don't have enough data there to, to advance. I should also add that originally there were, there were more data appeared in, in the way that we gathered them. And that was just to ensure that we got the data. Um, and they were curated by pro project managers and, and removed. Okay, in terms of the, the distribution of observations among the kingdoms, um, most of the observations were plants. Okay, and um, that's about 50% of the observations, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. Go back. Um, there were observations, um, the second largest group were the animals, and then there were also uh, seaweeds and fungi, and together they made about um, 5% of the uh, observations, 5 to 10% of the observations. So uh, many kingdoms were observed. And of the organisms that we could get to species level, um, we represented what, what we found by year by a Venn diagram. And on the outside here, you have the, uh, the uh, uh, number that are unique to that year. So 2017, 14%. 2018, 23%, and here we have 24% in 2019. So there's lots of species still to, to, to darn it, <laughs> uh, lots of species to, to learn to see. Um, and 19% of the species were seen every year, okay? So that's a, about the, the overlap among the years. And then here is some data about the common species, and we have uh, taxon groups up here. So the butterflies are the solid lines. There are a couple of species of butterflies that we're seeing. Crabs here are the uh, uh, more dotted lines. And then we have more dashed lines for mollusks. So among the animals, these groups were seen very regularly. And here's some of the species that we're seeing. Um, so that's just a sample of what they were seeing. And what you should note about this is it's, it's kind of hand-sized, things that were easy to see. Uh, a lot of these uh, crabs and mollusks are not moving, darn. Uh, I'm sorry with this, I apologize. Going all the wrong way, here we go. And um, they, uh, as what you might expect that uh, people, naive users might see. So these are, are things about hand size that are, are colorful or easy to, to see. Of the observations, um, uh, uh, of the observations, we had asked students to take more than uh, one image to try to capture sort of the area and to, to get the whole organism and to get details. And they followed those instructions very well. I didn't comment before, but I will now that the instructions were given by um, people from the uh, National Park Service who are partners on the Boston Harbor Islands. And their team instructed the students about how to do this. They use iNaturalist regularly on, on their tours. And so they had between 20 minutes and 30 minutes with groups of about 25 at a time to instruct. Uh, and they were asked to take more than a couple images. So they did, that was good. Of the image quality, we judged about 31% had good image quality. So that means they were focused on, on the organism. They were, um, uh, that you could see parts of the organism and they were um, in focus. Not all the images were in focus and okay, not there. They're pretty good. And then finally, we thought 15% were poor. They just weren't very good at taking pictures of, of these kinds of species. Next, um, we, we thought that 64% uh, could be ID'd to species or genus. But for 26%, we, we really had doubts. Uh, we as experts couldn't do it. And so we weren't confident they could be. We judged 10% of the observations were unidentifiable from the images. So uh, the three of us are, have experience in biodiversity. I'm not such a marine person, but the other two were. So we, we had a, a, a group of people who knew about local biodiversity. And so um, uh, it's a reflection in part of what these students knew to take pictures of. It's, 
when you don't know much about the group or the taxonomy, it's very hard to know what to take a picture of. <clears throat> okay, now spatial quality. Here we have a map um, uh, of the uh, terrestrial species from the island. And uh, this is very re reassuring when I saw this plot because you can see that a lot of the observations occur along the trails, meaning that uh, the, the students are, are following the trails and noting things and taking pictures. And a lot of them are, um, are also um, um, on the island itself. Um, now, um, it's also the case when you look at the marine species um, here that they're along the edge of the island. So that's also very reassuring. The ones you see in the middle could be shells or other things that turned out to be marine, but you can see there's certain beaches they went to and there's a little bit of air it looks like. Uh, there's some points that seem far off. The ones right along the edge here are probably the result of um, lower high tide, so they're pretty good. Um, I wanted to say that one of the unique things that happened during this analysis was that at first, uh, we just downloaded the standard download from iNaturalist and um, looked, at the, um, looked at the data. And then we started to look at individual, the records of individual people to see the images and so on. And we uh, quickly def uh, found images that the students had taken within the appropriate time frame that didn't make it on the island. Uh, so what was going on there is that the, the GPS uh, location um, reported from the uh, uh, iNaturalist phone app uh, placed the, the observation outside the boundaries of the project. So that was kind of disturbing. And that, was, um, that occurred in uh, about 4 or 5% or 4 or 5% in the first year. And then in the subsequent years, it got better. We're not sure why. It may have something to do with the upload process. It may have something to do with the, the cell phone models. It may have something to do with uh, the service provided the, by the, um, by the uh, uh, companies uh, the students were using. The other thing I wanted to comment about regarding the, the spatial um, information is iNaturalist gives back a name for the location. It's a suggested name, but those names were quite variable. Uh, I think we got over 60 different names suggested uh, when we thought we would get back just Thompson Island. So that was quite amazing. And the last thing I wanted to show you with regard to the spatial quality has to do with the variability in the, in the uh, location uh, error. And that's here. This is the, the circle that surrounds the observation. And you can see that the vast majority of the, of the uh, um, observations are sort of within 10 meters. And that's great. And, Many, many are, are within 100 meters. But look, there are a bunch that get, darn it. <laughs> I'm tapping this the wrong way, I apologize. Uh, uh, that uh, there are vast amounts that are, are, there's some, I mean, that are quite large. And so one has to be careful uh, when evaluating the, the image location. Even in an area of an urban area like Boston, there could be large uncertainty associated with them. So I think, uh, or, for uh, although we, we, we know about uh, some of the errors associated with museum records that can be difficult. Um, here we have machines and I thought that the, the, the location data would be very good, but we didn't necessarily find that to be the case uh, as to the same degree I'd hoped. Okay, I wanna finish out with just a couple of discussion points and a conclusion. Um, the diversity of, of species collected was not surprising given the diversity of habitats on the island. There are over 900 species that have been identified on the Boston Harbor Islands using iNaturalist. However, we were using naive uh, observers and they're there for just a, a couple weeks uh, of time, late August, early September uh, is when they did this collecting. And so uh, these 900 species were collected from many islands over, over all the seasons. Um, and I think it's important to note that students found species that attracted their attention were easily photographed because they did not move or were of the right size. Examples included herbs and shrubs that were flowering or, or fruiting, oyster mussels, snail shells, that kind of thing. But they also found things that um, were unknown there. For instance, we found a species of snakes and there are no records from that snake on the island. Or they documented the population of English oak trees that is the, the uh, most concentrated population in Massachusetts. So there are other discoveries they made that one we didn't necessarily anticipate. 
And that brings up this idea that um, amazingly with a short period of instruction, uh, 30 minutes, and if you combine that with the digital natives expertise with a small phone, um, even naive, uh, uh, naive users uh, using iNaturalist, the, which is a, everybody knows is a very well designed app, were able to produce observations that the, the uh, identifier community could turn into research grade observations. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, the students' observations are, are by no means perfect, but their observations are building a record that can be mined by scientists to answer questions about species distributions, phenology, and invasions. So it's uh, with iNaturalist or other apps, it's a question of uh, getting it in, into their hands and, and letting, them, letting them go out and look, encouraging them to do so. And as we've heard earlier today, just in the previous talk, getting it in more languages will only help that process. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention and uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, we have a few minutes before question, for questions before we need to go on to the next one. Quinton Groom asks, um, have you tried to evaluate learning incomes? What would be a good learning at, in, outcome for this? Um, uh, this was a very short term uh, experience and we've done a lot of, uh, we did a, a, a pre and post survey. And in that survey, the general um, outcome is that people enjoyed themselves, they had a good time. And I think that's the most important outcome you could expect. There were certainly students who, in, uh, I watched one year who walked around the island chatting with one another because this was their first time sort of with their buddies of that age. Uh, and uh, they were more entranced with each other than they were at looking at, at uh, biodiversity, I think. But uh, overall, I think it was a very positive experience. The, uh, I, we have the option to look and see if, if they continued. And my brief uh, attempt at that shows only a small number continuing to use the app. But um, uh, among biology majors, we're using iNetris regularly. And I'm starting to find people who are using it outside the courses. They're starting to become addicted. So that's what I'm, we're hoping for. Mm -hmm. I want to go ahead and stop sharing your screen. And then the uh, last question is, can you talk about the differences uh, between data quality of observations created by enthusiasts mo motivated for their own interests compared to the students who are to some degree operating under coercion or assignment? I think there's a huge difference. And uh, we uh, see that because of the city nature challenge. Um, most of the observations are coming from enthusiasts and they care more about what, what they find um, mm -hmm. and other citizen science-based projects. Um, but uh, what citizen science tries to do is combine um, getting um, uh, observations, uh, reliable high quality observations with the opportunity to engage more people. And the biggest problem in the world today in terms of uh, appreciating biodiversity is people are moving into urban areas and not having a chance to to see nature at all. So this is a tool, citizen science is a tool by which people can start to appreciate it. And in the end, if only a very, very small percentage of people uh, engage regularly, you can uh, accomplish amazing things. I think about, uh, there's, uh, I only think about three or 4,000 people per day put it, data into, into eBird. But look what that's done over, over 10 years or 20 years. It's growing mm -hmm. at such an amazing rate. And I think that can be done across the globe for all species. Well, thank you. Uh, Maxim, you want to unmute and um, are you going to be